Space. NBS Happening Now. Item number Thank two, you. communication from the chair. Thank you, colleagues. I welcome you. Uh, are you now settled? Okay. okay. I welcome you to today's sitting. Um, remember yesterday, honorable colleagues, I told you that I have a list of colleagues who were ranked not to be participating in parliamentary activities. And uh, the unfortunate bit is most of them were saying they don't catch our eye, we don't give them space, we struggle, but yet I know most of them don't attend. Today I've seen like two, they've come, they are in, so if they stand up, I'll give them affirmative action. Uh, now, uh, instead of reading out the names, because some called me pleading, I'm going to write to them individually. Okay? Come and, uh, and represent their people. Because you see, don't depict the presiding officers. Among all people, why wouldn't we pick you? Yeah? Yeah. But, uh, and uh, some, by the way, attend, but they just uh, follow proceedings uh, properly. So uh, those ones at least are better <laughs> than, than, than those who don't come. So uh, I encourage all of you to participate in the proceedings of this house uh, so that you represent your people. Your people, let me tell you, honorable colleagues, if you think being in a constituency working alone will bring you back here, I can tell you you are mistaken. The way, the day your opponent goes to the constituents and says, this one whom you voted to go and present our issues has never spoken and has evidence. I'm telling you, you will start on a very, very wrong footing. I try to speak, at least to greet the speaker. Oh, oh. <laughs> On, on the pro, uh, 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 <laughs> because at least the people don't know about content. They, they know the times you've spoken. Okay, okay. Uh, and I would want to give you opportunities really to come up and express uh, yourselves. Uh, so, seniors, when you see standing up, and sometimes I jump you, and I'm uh, picking those who have not been seen many times. No, it's the affirmative action we want to make. Uh, yesterday. I agreed with the Minister for Kampara that she will um, update the House after meeting, after meeting with colleagues uh, who had raised the issue of FICOS law. So I hope the Minister for Kampara is around because I'll be calling her, Government Chief Whip. I hope she's around. I'll be calling her to, uh, to, to, to update the House. Then, uh, when we were concluding yesterday, I reminded you, honorable colleagues, we are all part of this house and would want to help facilitate government business in a timely manner. And therefore, we request honorable colleagues on the front bench, and, and uh, some of you, by the way, are doing it very well. We request you to work with us, to cooperate with us, and we process government business. Now, on matters action taken, resolutions of parliament, especially when they are to do with accountability. And the minister wants to bring a one-liner and say, I reported back. Honorable Minister of Finance, I want to put you on notice that it would be difficult for me and either my colleague to process the budget for that ministry. That's the weapon we have. It's our last card. 
we've decided to start invoking it. If Parliament finds issues of accountability and it recommends action to be taken and the executive side doesn't take action, Parliament will not appropriate more money to an entity with questionable officers. So the board is in your court, but that's how we want to do it. And we, our prayer, and our biggest prayer, is that we don't reach that level. That's our biggest prayer, and I'm very sure we will not we will cooperate, work together, and ensure we don't reach that level. Uh, I hope my message has been taken in good faith. It's, uh, because even me, colleagues here making resolutions in vain, does not in any way help. And as far as fulfilling our mandate of oversight is concerned. Um, right Honorable Prime Minister, I have uh, this afternoon received um, a complaint petition, in fact, from, uh, from, um, uh, from West Nile Cooperative Union Limited on the issue of payment for their tobacco, money for tobacco. We've discussed this issue over time. We have agreed, but they are not receiving money. So, Honorable Minister, this is not a petition I will refer to the committee for now, no. I'm referring it to you, Honorable Minister for Trade, for consideration. And you update the House in 30 days. Then when you don't take any action, that's when I will invoke the committee uh, to look into it. I want to first give you a chance. So I'll, pa I'll pass it on after here uh, to ensure that indeed you work on it. Um, Yes, uh, colleagues, I've also received uh, a petition from our creative industry uh, members, uh, led by their chairman, uh, Eddie Musuza, commonly known as uh, Eddie Kenzo. Uh, today they've met me uh, this afternoon, but the petition I have assigned Honorable Nyamutoro to present it. Uh, so that I can guide on how it is going to be handled thereafter by the House. So uh, I will later on amend the order paper to allow Honorable Nyamoto to present the petition on behalf of our uh, friends in the music industry. They are in the gallery, but we shall read their names after I've received the list so that we can recognize uh, their presence. So for now, allow me to just pick five issues of national importance. Uh, I have very many issues I've uh, seen here being presented, but I focus on emergencies. Like I guided every Thursday, I'll be giving two and a half hours for members to raise issues, to do with your constituents, to do what, and I've already informed the Prime Minister, she'll be here with the ministers, uh, we shall give you enough time, colleagues, you raise your issues, and they are, we ensure that they are responded to. Uh, so uh, I'll start with Honorable Christine Kaya. I have not communicated things that need... Uh, yeah, my, my, no, my issues were very clear. The petition, I've given it to the minister. The other petition, Honorable Nyamutoro is going to present it. Now, what do you want to react on? These are... Uh, no, please. Colleagues, I urged you not to put fuel. Le, 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 let's keep using water. Those ones who are not, those who are not here yesterday, they don't know. Uh, and so, please, Honorable Christine. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, dear Speaker and the House, I would like to remind you that tomorrow is the World Teachers Day. I'm a, teacher, I'm a daughter to teachers. And um, based on the cries and challenges of the teaching profession in Uganda, I hereby report that it is uh, urgently needed, it is of uh, urgent uh, importance that the minister at least shares with us a statement 
First of all, to recognize this um, profession as an important profession, and um, to also show us the plan as a minister, I mean as a ministry, concerning the, 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 the teaching profession, because for a very long period of time, they have been sharing with us some of their challenges. So we would use this chance, probably today or tomorrow, to get a statement from the minister as far as the challenges met by this profession are concerned, but also to, co to commemorate their day and to entice them and to also inform them that really parliament thinks about this profession. Thank you, Honorable. I thank you, right Honorable thank Speaker. Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank my sister, Honorable Christine, for raising this very critical matter, indeed. Teaching profession is a noble profession. We love our teachers. Many of us here are teachers. And it is also true, Mr. Speaker, that tomorrow, the 5th of October, every year has been designated as International Teachers Day that is being celebrated worldwide. And Uganda is also taking that day very seriously. Tomorrow we are having the national celebration. Honorable, don't make a statement in that form. Okay. We, we always receive statements, okay? So Thank you, you oh no, Mr. Speaker. Just first listen to me. Yeah. Uh, I would guide that if you have a statement, come, I give you space. Even today, I can amend the order paper and I accommodate you. Mr. Speaker, the, speak, the, the, the statement is being worked on. And I want to pledge that tomorrow, I will bring the statement right here and present on the Thank floor. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, because that's what a member wanted. Colleagues, the member wanted a statement, then we would debate the statement. Yeah, but I would urge ministers, if you have any international day that is going to be celebrated, we give such a statement's priority on the order paper. So they are part of government business. So always come in time. Okay? Honorable Viraro, uh, procedure up. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Talking about uh, special days that are internationally recognized, on Sunday the 1st of uh, October, was International Older Persons Day. And I was expecting the Minister of Gender to seek space from the older paper to debrief this house on the status of older persons. When we are processing the uh, MPS for uh, the Minister of Gender in this financial year, there are very curious issues uh, in this entity and uh, the minister seemed clueless on how to progress. And when we offered the alternative, we thought we had uh, enabled a very disabled entity to really pick up, and including failure to find the resources uh, to finance um, uh, SAGE. I don't know, Speaker, would you, now that he's sleeping on the job to order the Minister of Gender, to come and debrief the House on the status of older persons and how they have handled the issues that were raised at the consideration of the MPS for this financial year, that they seem to be clueless about right on the speaker. Now that the minister and the entire entity seem to be sleeping on duty with your intelligence right on the speaker. Thank you, uh, Rob. Yes, I also observed that and I was concerned. Now, I think as a practice, how we are going to move forward. Okay, if the government in power is not able to give a statement, then I'll be allowing the opposition under Rule 53, where the leader of opposition is entitled to, to making statement, to give statement. Because I, I mean, you, you make my just uh, government chief whip. I, even me, my hands get tied. Okay? You have an international day. You spend government resources on it. This is parliament that appropriates. 
And you don't bring here a statement so that members start bet and come on board? I don't know going forward what we do. What, what do you think we do, government chief? Whip? Right, Honorable Speaker, the standard practice normally is the minister comes to cabinet with uh, a statement, an information paper, then later on the minister proceeds on the floor. Just like you are aware, on 9th of October we are celebrating our independence. And the minister in charge of the presidency has written to you requesting for space tomorrow on the order paper to brief the country through parliament. That is normally the standard practice and we will inform ministers or MDAs to normally respect that practice that after cabinet they should come to parliament. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Yes, uh, I had allowed Honorable Viraro. Yeah, thank so, you, right Honorable uh, Speaker. Just before Honorable Viraro. So even then, for days that are already covered, for example, the day for older persons, please let the minister prepare a statement. Then next week I give space and we discuss their issues. Okay? Right Honourable Prime Minister, are you with me? That for Minister for Elderly to bring a statement, Minister for Gender to bring a statement. And uh, next week, I'll also appoint a date for, I think next week, that's when we should have debate on the one for Youth Day, which we deferred. Okay? Right Honourable Speaker, the Minister for Elder Persons will bring a statement here since we had our day when we were in recess. He's going to present a statement here on the floor of Parliament. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Honorable Guzuri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, you guided that the Minister for Lands and Urban Development should comply with the statutory requirement for them to bring a report to this house to highlight how all local governments are complying with the physical planning act to date that report has not been submitted anywhere i therefore seek your indulgence to invoke your powers so that the prime minister can last with the responsible minister so that we know to what extent these local governments are complying. Otherwise, we are destined to develop slums in this country and uh, I don't know who's going to pay the price. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable Minister, you're here. An update for the House. And colleagues, on Tuesday, uh, we are having a statement from the Minister of Energy on the status of electricity sector. So issues to do with electricity, she, uh, she promised me on Tuesday. I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank Honorable Guzuli for the concern. It's Oguzu Li, Ogu not Oguzuri. Oguzuli. <laughs> right, Honorable, right, Honorable <laughs> Speaker, I want to pledge to this House that next, next week we shall submit the report as required. Good. So, thank you. Now, colleagues, uh, let me go back on track. Uh, uh, Honorable. Procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, yesterday I raised the issue of the challenge of um, sewage in Rubaga Division. You sent us to the field, and the Minister of Education was there together with the team, the chair of the education committee, and you had asked them to come and report. So right on, uh, speaker, I'm just wondering whether it would not be procedure right to allow them report to the house and we'll find a way forward. But also, the minister of lands, right on, speaker. Just, honorable uh, sir, you can take your seat. Uh, just let it not, uh, let it pass. 
Honorable Sarah came just a minute after I had addressed that matter. So. Yeah, you sent Honorable us to the field. My, my apology. My apology. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. That, that's the point I started with, Honorable. Oh, they are going to report. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable colleagues. Last year, 2022, September and October, there were a lot of rains that ravaged the country and most of the roads were destroyed and reports were here, brought here in the, in the floor of parliament. Buhweju West and the whole of Buhweju inclusive who reported to this house as a matter of national importance. Today, after September and in October, no action has been taken at all in Buhweju. Roads like Echirembe, Echiha, Nyamihira, and so many, many, many others, right on the speaker, were broken off and communities have never connected ever since. Right on the speaker, we are again into the same season of the year. My prayers, right on the speaker, that this house now compares government to go to Buheju and fix some roads so that communities can be reconnected to, that the Ministry of Works provides carvats and BRCs to replace those that were destroyed by the rains during that season. Right on the speaker, I beg to pray. Thank you. Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. I thank my honourable colleague for reminding us on the matter. And uh, I'm going to get in touch with him to get further clarification and the information, then we saw we can sit with him to sort that problem and we get out of it. Thank you. Uh, but, 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 but Honorable, Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, you have a station in Mbarara. Have your own station. So the member has just given information. What I expected was you to say you're going to direct the manager of your station in Mbarara to go and assess. And then, yeah, well, you, you think that would be better, or oh, you're working on it. <laughs> uh, oh no, Minister. Uh, uh, right, Honorable uh, Speaker, why I insisted I need to contact the Honorable Colleague to verify the claims. This, that problem was nationwide. And the majority of the problems of that category we have worked on them. And I'm, I'm also, I was also wondering why we have not tackled their part. That's why I said I will get in touch with him. We, fire, we further verify, then we see where the problem was. If we see they were missed out maybe because of any problem, we have the capacity, we have the regional mechanical workshop, we have an force account, even of recent, the one billion, half of it has already gone. We saw to sit and harmonize that that problem is solved. Thank okay. you very much. Chairman, chairman Committee on Roads. Uh, before Chairman Committee, before, is, is the procedure matter on ever? Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, as a matter of procedure, following what uh, Honorable Mukama is saying, he's saying he wants to get in touch with Honorable Viraro. But the problem is the same. In Mbale, we had the same story for a year now. The Prime Minister will have had me meetings with her. She promised there were two, 220 billion shillings for roads. Nothing has happened. So for the Minister to say to get in touch with only one person for one region, when other regions are suffering the same, it will not be good. We have submitted all these roads and bridges personally to the Minister of Works. Nothing has happened. I've written to everyone. Nothing has happened. So would it be a procedural matter? To say he would, would it be a procedural right to say we only move with one person other than the entire nation? I beg to move right. Honorable colleague, before I make my comment, let me first allow <laughs> chairman of the committee. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. And uh, I was looking at my brother, Honorable Minister. He, I happen to chair that committee. Every time we interact, 
with the ministers, and they take and quote him. They are very clear that they don't have money. In uh, the Mbarara Mechanical Workshop, right on the speaker, there are three excavators. They are all down. They said it is only one that can be able to move, but also it would need 16 million, which the workshop does not have. Now, that applies to the other mechanical workshops in the country, Retoral Speaker. Retoral Speaker, those mechanical workshops, we're actually taking an effort to, to, to assess them. They are white elephants. Now, I'm wondering why my senior here, I don't know whether it is a spirit of cadership, why he cannot tell the, this parliament the truth. No, that's not a spirit of cadership. No. Kada has told the truth. <laughs> because, really, right on the speaker, and I, I want to be on record on this, that as we head for, for, for these heavy rains, it is going to be worse, and to everyone. So, we should not cosmetic right on the speaker about this. The Honorable Minister should not give blanket statements. This is something that we should interrogate. If we, they need support, they should state it to the country, and we support them. Thank you. Honorable Minister, on Wednesday next week, I need you to give a statement showing your capacity and preparedness to handle emergencies that are coming. Because I'm having very many issues. Honorable Nyash Kongoro has a bridge. Who oh, has huh? very many. So now we need to know how prepared are you. So that if you are not and you don't have resources, we stop wasting time about it. Okay? Otherwise, the message you're giving us here shows you have money, but what the chairman of the committee is finding from his assessment with the committee seems you're not doing well. Uh, Rope, you wanted to say something? Thank you, General Speaker. Uh, of course, I, I submit a of empathy to my honorable brother. I submitted to the House a catalog of uh, issues for which members raised concern and they got no responses. Um, and this issue was issue number 19. It was raised on the 25th of April 2023 by the Honorable Francis Mujuche. It's being brought back by the Honorable um, Bilal. There are over 50 issues here, and they're going to continue re being recycled here because the front bench prefers that they fizzle out, I don't know, Speaker. But, Honorable Speaker, would it be procedure okay with your kind indulgence that um, in your time after this house, you kindly get hold of this document and call minister by minister, as a roll call of, of uh, perpetual absentees to come here and answer to their duty. Because a secret document of the house called the order paper is being congested because there are people sleeping on duty. And we are still calling business, right on the speaker. May I kindly ask of you that uh, you indulge your, the order paper to call them. Because in, uh, in the matters you are calling, on, um, on their responses may not answer to these questions. There are several issues on the environment, on corruption, on infrastructure, on what, and uh, they're not answering them. Thank and you. they believe they will fizzle out, right on speaker. May you kindly guide on how we should deal with these issues now that this is a document, a property of the House, right on speaker. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lop, uh, for, for, for that information. Already, Clark is instructed to comb through the answered pick all these issues. And I was told that uh, I think they should be ready by, by tomorrow. Okay? Then I wanted, after we've gotten all these issues, we have a meeting with the lead of government business, the government chief whip, the lead of opposition, and the crack, and we ensure that we create enough space on the order paper for ministers to respond to all these issues without going into too much. Oh, even the prime minister can take them on. You know, under Prime Minister's time, and we have them sorted. 
But what members need are answers. Of course, it's really absurd for a member to ask a question and he gets an answer after six months. It's, uh, that's not only a failure on the part of the executive, but also on our part as the leadership of the house. Okay? If a minister doesn't respond, then we shall come here and we say, so and so has deliberately refused. But they shouldn't fail because they've always responded. They've always responded to these issues. So, uh, Clark, ensure that indeed all these issues are finished so that maybe Friday I can have a meeting uh, with you, with the leadership on both sides, and we see how ministers can quickly. Maybe some have forgotten about these issues. Yeah, okay. We do all this together, honorable colleagues. We handle it together. So, um, no, honorable colleagues, we are going to go on procedure and we reach 4 p.m. You know, uh, let's just conclude. Let's all other issues, I'm pushing them to tomorrow. Okay? Or, no, ah, there is one issue, Honorable Nachimuri. Yes, yesterday, because I pushed you to today, and uh, Honorable Christine, I've remembered. Huh? No, the rest I will do tomorrow. I'll do one, one. The rest tomorrow, I'll give you enough time, Honorable colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, yeah. for this opportunity. I rise on a matter of national importance regarding a uh, disaster that happened in my area, Kalangala. On the 2nd of October, that was Monday, we had a heavy downpour, and a number of 78 people lost their, lo their property, including houses and different belongings, and also crops, animals. And this was in uh, Moena Landing site in Kalangala Town Castle. Mr. Speaker, we have a, a total number of 34 females, 25 males, 11 children, and eight elderly people. And uh, my prayers, Mr. Speaker, one, for the Prime Minister's office to go to ground and assess the level at which this affected our people. And secondly, for the very first time in the history of Uganda, for Kalangala to get relief items, because we have never gotten any from this government. Cons yes, relief items. I represent Kalangala. I know what I'm saying. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for your opportunity. Thank you. But that's a loaded statement. Say Kalangala has never. You know, you have. Uh, anyway, one of Prime Minister. Is it true Karanga has never received any ready for help? Right, Honorable Speaker, um, we have to check our records uh, to ascertain whether Karanga has never got any relief item, but he's sorry for what happened, and uh, we are going to send our team on ground to assess. Uh, how far uh, that uh, what what really happened on the ground, and then after the team has come back, we also handle the issues that need urgent attention. I thank you. Thank you. Now, honourable colleagues, I've received four cheats here. Uh, you're even bored. You tell me I give you an opportunity because tomorrow you're not going to be here. Can you, uh, can you imagine? <laughs> this democracy has taken us far. <laughs> no, you're, you're giving me notes. You're, not, you're even saying, allow me, me, I want to speak day. today because tomorrow I'm not here. <laughs> no, I, I really understand <laughs> the issues you might be having, but as long as Parliament has not assigned you anywhere, I expect you to be here when I'm here. Otherwise, whom am I going to address? <laughs> will, I, will I run business alone? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Honorable Christy, uh, Martin Muzari procedure. Honorable procedure, then. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, before we went for recess, uh, the issue was raised here to do with the feedback, especially on resolutions passed by this parliament, especially on reports of accountability. 
I had expected that uh, the Prime Minister would have used this uh, recess to organize for us that report so that we can know how far and what actions have been taken on these reports or resolutions. I thank you. Yes, only we are working on it. And this is related to what we just talked about a few minutes ago. When, uh, because, you see, before I put anyone to task, I first put my officers to task to get for me information. Then when we go to a meeting, I say, I need A, B, C, D. So we are working on it, and we are going to work with the Prime Minister, and they will come. Yes, Honorable Musasizi. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in respect of what Honorable Muzare has said, we have reports from accountability committees which are considered by the House, and we are asked to, pro to produce a Treasury Memoranda. The period given to us normally by law is six months within which we must report back to Parliament on the actions we have taken. Right Honorable Speaker, I wish to inform the House that we have always complied with this uh, provision. However, there are other reports where you direct us to report within a given period, say one week, two weeks or so, here, in uh, many occasions, we have fallen short to comply with your timelines. I wish to invite members and your staff that emphasis when they are, when they are, uh, when they are analyzing, emphasis should uh, be more on directives which require us to report within a given timeline without necessarily focusing on the Treasury Memoranda, because on that one we always comply. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Yes, Honorable Mr. Sizi, you are right, and we talked about this yesterday. Because action taken reports provided for under Rule 220 of the Rules of Procedure are very clear. Okay? On, re, on, 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 re, on re, uh, Auditor General's uh, reports processed by committees, are the ones where we need the Treasury Memoranda, and indeed, six months, you've always complied. And the reason as to why you comply, you know. <laughs> also, you know you, others have your own pressure, your partners. Uh, okay, IMF, ah, like you've whispered, IMF is always putting you on pressure. Now, but also, like how IMF puts you on pressure, other reports which IMF doesn't even know about are also critical to this house. Okay? So, and those reports we do consider a period depending on the urgency of the matter. If a matter is very urgent, we usually, sometimes we can give one week, sometimes two weeks. Usually we do three months, but depending on how urgent the matter is. So, uh, but we are going to sort all this. So on Treasury Memoranda, we are up to date. The Minister of Finance has done its job. I think Mr. Sis wanted to put that on record. Yes. Honorable Christine, and then... Thank you very much, Right Honorable issue. Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I rise on the matter of urgent national importance about the digital X-ray machine of a Tuturo hospital that has taken over five years without repair. Right Honorable, we started following up on this machine since 2018. As leaders of Kumi, we have made efforts to go to the Ministry of Health and yet information we are given is that that machine can only be repaired by a regional workshop. When we went to the Minister of Health, we were given information that the contractor was procuring spare parts from out. Up to date, Mr. Speaker, my people of Kumi District are suffering a lot. We don't get X-ray services, neither do we get scanning services in a tutor hospital. So I want to find out, Mr. Speaker, what the Minister of Health is doing to that effect. So my prayers are, one, that the Ministry of Health takes this as urgent matter and have the machine repaired as soon as possible. Number two, if the Ministry cannot have it repaired, right, Honorable Speaker, let a step be taken to procure 
a new machine for a Tutur hospital. And finally, those who caused a lot of mess that to date the machine is not repaired, they should be brought to book, right on board speaker, because we, need to, we don't need to play around with government resources. Thank you. I beg to pray. Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to appreciate the members' concern, which is a very big concern. And uh, in her statement, she's saying from 2018, and uh, it would be unfortunate if that is what has been. But I've been in most hospitals, and we have been doing a lot. I'm aware that there are some X-ray machines that uh, we are brought in which don't have spare parts. And uh, if a tutor hospital is one of them, I take it upon my certified honorable speaker to follow up this matter and to have action on this matter. And we shall work with the honorable member to ensure that something is done with emergency. It, it needs. Thank you. Thank you, honorable minister. So um, let me just have the minister for KCCA reporting to us on their field visit, and then we go to the petition. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. A question was raised yesterday about uh, the concern about the schools. This morning we have sent a team of technical people to those schools. But by the time I left office, they had not yet come back with the report. And I promised to report tomorrow when they have given me a written report about the schools. And public health has been there. And the uh, Minister for ed the, the Education Committee has been there. So they are not yet back from the field. But they are here. Chairman, uh, Committee on Education? No, the they, they KCCA group. Me, I sent the KCCA oh. group. Chairman Education. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, as the Minister of Cases has put it, and as you remember, Honorable Colleagues, yesterday the matter concerning the contamination of water sources in Kampala following the release of sewage during heavy rains, uh, reportedly by the two schools, that is St. Kizito. It's actually St. Kizito Secondary School and St. Annie's Primary School in Kawani Rubaga. And the need for the Minister of Education and Sports and Kampala Capital State Authority to investigate the matter was raised and briefly discussed. So the speaker guided honorable colleagues that the chairperson and the deputy chairperson of the Hon education. Honorable Chair, you're not making a report. The report yes. is from the minister. Yes. Okay, so don't take us through the So report. we visited hon right honorable speaker mm -hmm. and honorable members. I'm, I went with the team of three members from the committee and honorable Saro Pen, who raised the matter, we are joined by a representative of the Kampara MP, that is honorable Alozia Mukasa. We made an on-spot assessment. We made an on-spot assessment. Our brief findings is like this. One, we have established that the problem is much bigger than what was uh, brought here uh, on the floor. On, honorable, honorable Chair, I don't, I, I don't want you to give a report, okay? Because the report is for the minister. You see, I want the one who will take action. I just wanted to confirm that you have gone. Honorable colleagues, tomorrow is not far. Uganda is not ending today. Kampara is not... Please, please. You know, Kampara is not closing today. Okay? Honorable Minister, come tomorrow. Honorable Minister, are you listening to me? Yes. Just come tomorrow, like you have requested, and you give the statement, the response. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Just let's wait tomorrow. Yeah. Please, the team, you should connect together. Let's wait tomorrow. Okay? Uh, honorable colleagues in the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of uh, pupils and teachers of Chamvuma Primary School from Ruka District. They are represented in Parliament by Honorable Kisa Stephen and Honorable Mbayo Esther. They've come to observe proceedings of this house. Please join me in welcoming them.
Kind of stand up. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, equally, we have students from Global College, Mayuge and Mayuge Hills Secondary School. They are represented by Honorable Agure Bajire and Honorable Rukia Isanga Nakadama, right, Honorable? They've come to observe proceedings of this house. Please join me in welcoming them. Now, uh, Honorable colleagues, in the gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of artists under Uganda National Musicians Federation. Uh, they include the following, Edrisa Musuza, a.k.a. Eddie Kenzo, uh, uh, Shiba Samari Kalunji, uh, Joseph Mayanja Kamirion, Warukaga Shafik, uh, Nabawan Kalidia, uh, common known as Jasmine. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Lydia Jasmine. Carol Nantongo, Hamson ba Bariruno, Lucas Sam Rubiongo, uh, that, that is uh, Levickson. Yes. Chigund Bruno, you know, Honorable Kayemba needs to be near me because he knows all their names. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's A.K. Bruno. Mm -hmm. um, Raymond Joseph Mugerwa. Yes. Our gospel. Yes. Uh, Ray Signature. Uh, uh -huh. Lillian Mbabazi. Uh, who is the secretary and uh, chief petitioner? Uh, Chris Banina, uh, Ma Magada Isaac, Okori Moses Buju, uh, uh, that is uh, Coco Finger. Yes. Uh -huh. Kankunda Rose, Nina Rose, that's uh, Nina Rose, Ranga Sulaiman. Uh, 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 Honorable Kabanda, unfortunately, I don't have their numbers, so, so I have nothing to share. So <laughs> I, I see some of you are very excited. So, yeah. They didn't include the numbers on the list. Yeah. Uh, Mutebi Ramadan. Yes. Uh, Honorable Kayemba, you have to keep reminding me their stage names. And Kayem, Onevo Kayem also has all the numbers. So, Anne uh, 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 Me. Yes. Uh, uh, Kasag, uh, Fred Sebata, our historical. Uh, yes. uh, Kasaga Julius. Now, I've known uh, the average age of this parliament. <laughs> From the way you've welcomed Fred Sebata. <laughs> yes. Um, Peterson Sari. Uh, Mugisha Richard. Karumba Michael. Yes. Martin Muhumza. Now, those who said Banyankwere can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> we have a representative. <laughs> Yeah, we, we even have our bumps. Uh, yeah. um, uh, George Kigozi. Uh, yes. Joe Steady. Yes. Yes. That's our Joe Steady. Yeah. Uh, Odora Dennis. Ah, okay. That's a, uh, that's a clear confirmation that the Japadora can sing. Yes. Uh, we are yet to get a Musoga. Take <laughs> Emmanuel, Isaac. Uh huh. The, the Musoga musicians are in Paramin. So, yes. Uh, Sentongo Emma, we have our very own uh, Rachel Magora. So, who does uh, good work. Um, 
Sewanya na Malcolm James. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, Sewa Sewa. Eh? Uh, yes. Arionga uh, Uzea. Mm -hmm. Muhumza Anton. I think Banyankora are dominating this list. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Odiambo Joffrey. Uh, so the Samia are well represented, Honorable Macho. <laughs> Othieno Dedrick. Uh, Agaba Ezra. Layeng Fortunate Agre. Kayuza Solomon. Seguja Madil. Lokutan Alex. Mandera Kenned. Jurua Joseph. Chobtunji Charity, Amodoy John Bosco, Awol Zulaika, Babidye Harima, Atwine Amon, Mugwanya James Robinson, Mama Wenge Jennifer, Owere Philip, Kokiriza Drake James, Ongom Jimmy, and uh, Mubiru Vincent. But we have also uh, in members uh, in the chambers. Honorable Geoffrey Rutaya. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and the manager of many musicians, Soroka Yemba. Yes. So, colleagues, like I told you earlier, we have uh, uh, their petition, which they passed on. Uh, kind of. Yes, Honorable Nyanzi, you have a procedure matter? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. As you were calling out responses from the front bench, I remembered that uh, before we went for recess, the issue of government availing resources to higher education <coughs> students financing board came on the floor, and the, the Right Honorable Third Deputy Prime Minister promised to liaise with the government so that she comes back to this August House with a response why I'm particularly concerned, Right Honorable, is that universities opened and are capable, but disadvantaged learners are stranded in villages. Wouldn't it be procedurally right that as other Honorable Ministers are bringing responses, the Right Honorable Prime Minister is also asked to update this house on that matter? Yeah, uh, on, on quick, we've agreed. I've already guided how we are going to, to move. But this is a very, uh, it's an emergency issue, Minister for Finance, instead of me disturbing uh, the right honor Prime Minister, have you provided money for this? Because we have students who are stranded. Mr. Speaker, sir, for the last few days, I have been involved in providing money to various votes. I needed to go and check and find out whether this is one of the votes where I have provided money. So, Honorable Minister, tomorrow, update us. Okay? Uh, tomorrow, update us. Uh, Krak, kind of call the next item, which is the petition. Petition by the Uganda National Musicians Federation. I, I, I chose Honorable Nyamutoro being the youth MP and most of these people, you know, and she's a national youth MP. Thank you, Right Honorable uh, Speaker. And uh, I can confirm she also has a bright future. <laughs> huh? Right Honorable Speaker, the House has not applauded that. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Chemasweta has requested that I start off by requesting you to allow him see off Sheba as she's leaving. <laughs> yeah, um, wow. 
I, 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 think, I think what is important is for, for us to give an opportunity to Shiba to first see who Chema Sweet is <laughs> before we... So Chema Sweet, you can come in. <laughs> Please, don't have a <laughs> right honorable speaker um, allow me start by laying on table a procedure honorable i'm sorry to disturb my young sister the procedure that i'm raising is that history has had it about honorable chama sweet there's one time We were some place in Changwanzi, and uh, he carried one of the female ministers. <laughs> and I don't know where he was going to take that lady, Honorable Bigombe. Is this procedure a right to allow Honorable Chama Sweet, with that history, <laughs> to follow Shiba? <laughs> <laughs> Na na ona ibo kabasharira ona because I was also not sure of ona ibo chema sweet I never made the ruling so let's proceed so I won't be culpable in any way. <laughs> Thank you, right honourable speaker. Right honourable speaker, allow me first lay on table a copy of the petition by the Uganda National. Musicians Federation. I beg to lay. Right Honorable Speaker, the petition states that the petitioners are citizens of Uganda and members of the Uganda Musician, the Uganda National Musicians Federation, an umbrella body that is geared towards promoting, protecting, and development of the music industry in the country. The petitioners are alive to the fact that since the enactment of the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act in 2006, some aspects of the law have been outdated in light of advancement of technology and emergence of international practices that have changed the nature in which the copyright operates. Right, Honorable Speaker, as a result, it is very prudent that this law is revised as soon as possible. Right, Honorable Speaker, in 2006, I was in primary school. And today, as a member of parliament, it simply means that for decades, the industry has never sought refuge. Honorable, uh, can, you, can you read the petition? Yes. OK? Because the petition was given to you, just read the petition. No, please, Honorable, under the petition. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Don't listen to strange voices. Right Honorable Speaker, the petitioners are not just contributors to the creative industry, but are also contributors to the economy. And with the existing legal framework for distribution of revenue collected from callback tunes, which disadvantages the artists and as most of the revenue, benefits the telecom companies rather than the artists who should benefit more from their works. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners aver that in order to encourage creativity and innovation, and as a way of growing the creative industry, the following proposals ought to be put in consideration by the executive and parliament while amending the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act. One. Revision of the charges for callback tunes to ensure a fairer split of the revenue collected from the callback tunes you see, in the percentage. Honorable colleagues, you should study the mood of the speaker. <laughs> you, uh, you should study the mood of the speaker. Okay? Yes. Don't think I'm, I'm, I can't hear. You should study my mood. Please, go on in the percentage of 60% to be retained by the artist and 40% to be remitted 
by both government and telecom companies. Secondly, right honorable speaker, imposition of a copy levy on devices used in reproduction of copyright protected works to be shared equally between governments and holders of copyrights and neighboring rights registered under this act. Imposition of strict measures against broadcasters who use pirated content because it undermines the intellectual property rights of the artists, hence causing a negative effect on their livelihood. Your petitioners recommend a fine of not less than five million shillings to be paid by a person who is convicted of infringing the copyright of an artist. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that the digital era needs to be embraced relating to the protection of the rights of artists in the digital domain, fostering innovation in digital content creation and facilitating fair compensation for online use of copyrighted works. The adequate capitalization of collective management organizations in order to empower CMOs to carry out their duties such as licensing, collecting royalties, and enforcing the legal framework on copyrights. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that there should be an establishment of a clear and transparent structure for the CMOs that incorporate a high level of accountability, including regular audits and reporting mechanisms to ensure that royalties are distributed fairly and promptly to the rightful owners. Right, Honorable Speaker, it would be prudent to the petitioners if registration and regulation of all third parties, including telecom aggregators who are involved in the distribution and dissemination of the copyrighted content. Requiring broadcasters to dedicate 90% of airtime to Ugandan music as a way of promoting local content and supporting the development of the industry in the country. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that we encourage the Ugandan models, actors, actresses, and artists in the advertising, promotion, influencing, and endorsement of products by companies in Uganda and developing Ugandan publishers through the imposition of higher charges of publishing licenses for non-Ugandans as a way of empowering the local creative industry provide employment opportunities for local content, and help build a distinct national identity in advertising. And lastly, right honorable speaker, the petitioners propose that requiring aggregators of licensed Ugandan intellectual property to be domiciled in Uganda as a condition for operating to ease accountability since they will be subjected to the country's legal framework on the copyright law. Now, therefore, right honorable speaker, the humble petitioners have a main prayer that seeks your indulgence to task the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs and all relevant authorities to amend the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act 2006 and incorporate the above proposals. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is, now, honorable colleagues, I know this is a matter a few colleagues have been uh, uh, following upon. But you cannot stop members of the public from petitioning. Rule 30 is very clear. At any time, because for them, they don't know what you're doing inside here. They are not privy. Okay? Oh, now. Maybe I need to, to inform our visitors that for you, you're not supposed to clap or... Uh, I think they were not briefed by our protocol team. Yeah. Uh, you appreciate at heart. So, so they have their issues. I know Attorney General has been making strides. Attorney General, you want to make any comment on this? Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Indeed, after a given period, the laws require to be 
received and updated. I do understand our musicians' concerns. Our chambers have been working on this law, but we will come the petition. We shall work with the committee and see how to improve it and accommodate their interests. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Now, Attorney General, I want to refer the petition. Um, I want to handle this petition in two ways. One, there are issues which are low hanging fruits for our music industry. These people are losing a lot of money, especially to the telecoms. These ringtones you are seeing being used and all that, some people are benefiting and some of these musicians are earning zero. Now, if you are to wait around six months, how many months of processing a row, they are losing revenue. It's like you uh, having your own business, just leaking. Someone is taking proceeds out of your business and you're not getting anything. They have aggregators and uh, I know that industry of aggregators very well. I know it very well. I've ever owned a business in that line, so I know it deeply. So they have aggregators who are, you know, you find a song which you pay 1,200 shilling, an artist gets like 70 shilling. Some of them get zero. Okay? So what I want to do is, on the issue of the law, Attorney General, I'm going to give you the petition. But on the issue of content of musicians, which is being used and they are not paying and yet they are earning, I want the committee on ICT, the committee on ICT to handle and report back to this house within 30 days. You wanted to say something? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. On 21st July 2022, my comrade Honorable Hilary Chiaga was given leave by this parliament to process the amendment of the 2006 Copyright and Neighboring Rights Bill. Law, Uganda Law Reform Commission took it over. We are, we are now approaching one and a half years. We haven't got any feedback from them. So my prayer is the Antony General's office handling this should speed up and expertise because the thieves are stealing, yet the industry is suffering. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Now, now Honorable colleagues, you can see why, why our, our friends are petitioning over this period. Attorney General, what is the problem? But as one of Nwagaba and one of Mshemeza. Yeah, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I thought I would give this information. The enforcement body in respect of this particular law is the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. And referring this matter to the ICT committee, in my view, may not get the proper results. But however, there is also a wide literature in respect of case law in respect of ringtones as we wait for whichever committee or for the Attorney General to amend the act, I would invite the fellow artists to consider using the courts of judicature to get remedies. But the enforcement authority is the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Yeah, thank you. You see, Honorable Nwagaba, what we are saying is simple. I've interacted with these people. Other artists in other countries are earning billions out of ringtones. But here they are not. Okay? And the committee responsible is the committee on ICT. When people come here to petition and they need our urgent help. That's why I have, uh, I, I have said we handled it in a two-way approach. So that the committee for ICT interacts with these agencies that are utilizing the content but are not paying. Even URSB, I know it's under committee on legal, but it can also appear and show us the challenges. But in the meantime, the biggest chua, Attorney General, is us having the role. Okay? Is us having the role. Honorable Mushemeza. Right, Honorable Speaker. Sometime back, 
I raised a matter of national importance, and you are in the chair. And one of the issues I raised was that very issue on the callback tune, uh, uh, expenditures and uh, uh, copyrights, and even the money for the deceased on the mobile money. Uh, right on the speaker, you referred the matter to the committee of ICT. I appeared to that committee as the first witness, and I'm aware the process is going on. Are we procedurally moving well to refer the same matter which is already ongoing to the ICT when the matter is being considered? Yes, we are proceeding very well and extremely well. Because you, there, is no, uh, there is no problem adding additional information. Because you see, they might be handling, but none of these artists has appeared. Now they, it is, uh, uh, oh, oh, one group appeared, another one didn't. Okay? Or oh, you can even appear, and I feel me as an individual, because, you see, colleagues, I have a petition, and it is signed by... Um, These are 63 plus 27 plus 19. Artists, you can't, you, you can't ignore their voice to say internally you're handling the matter. No, what you do, you refer to the committee. On top of what you're handling, listen to this petition. That's it. Honorable colleagues, let's not... Uh, uh, Honorable Bigger Rosa and then Lop. Thank, thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, this morning we are looking at innovations in this country. And honestly, we could not proceed because of the lacuna, the gaps in the Copyright and Neighbors Act. I honestly want to agree with you that this should have been done yesterday. And I promise you, my back, I'll be able to go to ICT to listen. Why give, me the, why give me the back? <laughs> huh? oh, oh, why? Yeah. It's, it's a Terego way of saying I'll give you my support. Okay, okay. <laughs> because in Terego, we carry babies on our back. Okay. There's nothing big about that. Thank okay. you. You know, we have one national reader who said, I'll put my behind. <laughs> now this one is putting the back. So, <laughs> Lop. Uh, oh, uh, Lop. Lop. Now I have your member. Let, let him say something. Uh, 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 Thank you. Bashir. Thank you, Right Honorable. But don't Namuga, Namuga. You are shadow minister of every. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable. Uh, the matter of the artists, of course, we understand the pain they go through. We appreciate the brick they add onto national building. And as a member of the ICT committee, I want to assure the artists present today on behalf of others that we are going to leave no stone unturned in ensuring that the rights the efforts of our musicians and all others in the art industry are catered for and much respected. Tomorrow, I want to inform the House and the artists that as the member of the ICT committee, we're expecting to meet these uh, brothers and sisters to forge our way forward to see how best the art industry can prosper in Uganda. Th thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Lop? Much obliged, right honourable speaker. Right honourable speaker, like the honourable Kayemba Solo observed, that on the 21st of July, this house graciously offered leave to honourable Chiaga to proceed with the private members' bill, and he was uh, seconded by the honourable Rachel Magola, one of the more prominent assets in this land to go on with the amendment. Of course, the, uh, the process, right, you are aware of the private member's bill has very serious inordinate challenges that we encountered. However, we were able to have meetings with the Law Reform Commission, which under the law is supposed to move these amendments in earnest, but they were sleeping on duty. We had the uh, a meeting with the law reform, the officer of the Solicitor General, and URSB. And the, the issues we had with the URSB was that even before 
you amend the law, like you observed the speaker, they are low-hanging fruits. And the issue of enforcement came to bear that the URSB is sleeping on duty in as far as enforcing the basics is concerned. So enforcement is a challenge and a problem. However, Rachel Speaker, this is not the challenge. Two weeks ago, I received a copy of a notice from the Solicitor General inviting for another stakeholders meeting of the same law. Will it please you, Rachel Speaker, to give the Office of the Attorney General timelines to clear all pending consultations so that the member can finally move the bill, including the Minister of Finance, which was consulted to notify Parliament if they have any reservations regarding to granting a certificate with financial implications, General Speaker. W what is so strange is that uh, I see government looking for revenue, chasing hawkers, you know, street vendors looking for small, small revenues. This industry is 100 times bigger than the so many small things that are really occupying government or get revenue. I wish you have an idea. So what happened to imagination from government? They are looking for small, small trinkets for revenue. When you have an obvious industry that can support government, right on speaker, I beseech you to give these government entities timelines that's the best answer for the industry. Timelines. We cannot legislate endlessly when we have people losing time, momentum, and motivation to create. It's not about art salon. It's about writers. It's about poets. It's about you know, comedians and everyone. Right on the speaker. This house needs to give timelines, which we are going to monitor religiously to ensure that they develop upon on this bill. Right on the speaker. I so pray. Thank you. I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, Attorney General, where is the problem? Before, you know. Right, Honorable Speaker, I do understand the LOP's concern about the delay. But if we are to make a law that uh, satisfies the interests of everyone. We have to do the requisite research. We have to be critical and meticulous at whatever we are doing. So I can uh, inform this house that we are on the right track. Maybe I can file a report specifically on this particular law in the next two weeks. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, what I've observed is there is a, a working relationship now. I, I, I don't know whether you feel it strong, whether you're making progress with it or not, Lop. But uh, yeah, le let's, uh, let's give ourselves 30 days, okay? Let's give ourselves 30 days, which is, uh, I, I think, wh which is okay. Otherwise, also, the mover slept on a job. Uh, re reason, reason being, you know, if government doesn't give you a certificate of financial implication, according to our rules, after 60 days, we deem it to have been issued. Otherwise, government should come out and say, we are giving you, the law you're bringing is in contravention of Article 93 of the Constitution, it has a charge on the consolidated fund or not. If you don't, once you've got a leave of parliament, then uh, you come here for first reading. And then sometimes they wake up. Uh, we've used it, but I'm appreciating the fact that the Attorney General's office and uh, the move and lope are coordinating, and I hope in 30 days we should get a very clear update. Yeah, I can see everyone is anxious. We are waiting for that law so that we unlock the potential of this very, very critical sector. Now, when you told, you had uh, anything to add? Right, Honorable Speaker, the law elaborately spoke my mind on oh. the issue of time frame. But allow me to appreciate you, right, Honorable Speaker, for taking pertinent concern in this issue. I'm certain that history will take pride in your leadership because the talent sector is the only avenue that we have to answering the unemployment question. Thank you, right, Honorable When Speaker. I retire, that's where I'm going. So I need to <laughs> fight for the sector. <laughs>
and many of you colleagues will join me. But uh, Honorable Guzuri uh, uh, had suggested to me something. He said when they're appearing before the committee, they should appear in a region so that it's not just a Kampara affair. Uh, uh, that, that one I will, um, I will detail it in the terms of reference when I'm forwarding the petition. Uh, thank you. Uh, colleagues in the, in the gallery this afternoon, uh, we have speakers, not deputies, but speakers from Western Region Districts, some of the Western Dist or Region Districts, the speaker of, uh, the speaker of Ruampara, uh, yes, Chiruhura, Kazo, Ntungamo, Shema, Iwanda, Hoima, Bundubujo, Abuhenju, Kagadi, Kakumiro, uh, Ruchiga, Shema, Mbarara, Chikube, uh, Kasese, Kagadi. They've come to observe how we are running the house, and they'll be advising me as speakers. They'll be advising the deputy later on on how better to run the house. Okay? Uh, thank you for coming, uh, friends. Yes, Honorable Sarah, procedure. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, now that we have speakers from different districts, although they are in Western Uganda, some time back, Right Honorable Speaker, I think it was in August, I raised the issue of the Ministry of Local Government failing to give stamps to the LC1 chairpersons, and this problem is still prevalent. Right Honorable Speaker, the Minister did pledge to follow up with the Ministry of Finance to ensure that they have the necessary resources and take the stamps to the LC1 chairpersons. Right Honorable Speaker, we extended the term of the LC1 chairpersons and therefore they are there working. But these chairpersons do not have the stamps which are key in, in doing their work as LC1 chairpersons. So, Right Honorable Speaker, the procedure issue is, is it not a procedure right for the Minister of Local Government? I had seen her here to give us an update on these stamps for the LC1 chairpersons. Thank you. Uh, Minister for Local Government, but even if Local Government is, is not here, had pledged the task for money from finance. Finance, did you give the money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for stamps. <laughs> you, you know, if there is any min oh minister for local government is here. Uh, yes, let her first. I hope you heard, Honourable Minister. Okay. She's always here with us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. We had the first batch of requisitions from local governments that didn't have. We ordered, we gave out. There is a second batch, and I do promise that we shall assemble those requests to the printing press and distribute them accordingly. I'll take it seriously, sir. But, Honorable uh, on, on Minister, these people are working. When, when? Right, Honorable Speaker, the first batch took us a month and a half. May I promise that I will do everything possible to ensure that within one month we deliver right honorable speaker. Thank you. So in one month you'll come back and update us. Okay? Thank you. Our next item. Item number three, laying of papers. Three one. Report of the Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry on the Due Diligence Oversight Visits on Co the Committee Chair. Divok. Now, Honorable colleagues, you can see Honorable Chemaswet left a long time ago to, re <laughs> uh, to lay a trap. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Honorable Chair, Committee on Trade. Oh. 
When I watch my sweater, I need in the house. Uh, at least, if anything happens to Shiba, we are sure it's not Chemaswet. Uh, he was here, we all witnessed. Uh, it's only over, you have 10 minutes. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay on table a copy of the report of the Sectoral Committee on Tourism, Trade, and Industry on the due diligence of site visits on the pre-export verification for conformity, commonly known as PIVOC, service providers in general goods in Dubai and India. I beg to lay. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to lay the minutes for the meetings that process the report, I beg to lay. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable colleagues, I'm aware I have very little time the report has been uploaded, so I want to believe that members will be able to read through. Honorable Speaker, sir, on pursuant of Rule 34 of our Rules of Procedure of Reporting to the House by the Committee, I go straight to the introduction of the report. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, Article 90, Clause 1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda Rule 150, and Rule 156, Rule 159, 187, and 189 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, and join committees with the authority and powers to, among others, research, investigate, and carry out oversight functions with respect to ministries, departments, and agencies under their purview, and make appropriate recommendations on them. It is against this background that some members of the Sectoral Committee on Tourism, Trade, and Industry carried out oversight visits on some of the newly procured pre-export verification for conformity, commonly known as PIVOC, service providers in general goods in Dubai and India, to establish their capacity. The oversight visits were conducted from 23rd to 29th February, Honorable Speaker, 2023. The delegations comprise of 12 members of parliament and six members uh, went to Dubai, six members to India. The details of the membership is in the report members can go through. Right Honorable Speaker, UNBS, which is the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, is a government agency established by an act of parliament, UNBS Act Cap 327. It became operational in 1989 and falls under the Ministry of Trade industry and cooperatives. The role of UNBS is formulated, is formulation and promotion of use of standards, enforcing standards in protection of the public health and safety and environment against dangerous counterfeit and substandard products. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, ensuring fairness in trade and precision in industry through reliable measurement system. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, where necessary, UNBS draws samples of products for laboratory testing. If the product meets the critical minimum requirements of the Uganda national standards or approved international standards, USB, UNBS issues a certificate of conformity. And once uh, the product does not meet the required standard, UNBS... No, on, on a colleague. Honorable Chair, you came to my office, I briefed you. I referred you to Rule 34. Okay? But you're reading a report. You see, just a brief recommendation. Just you touch on the recommendation. Because such a field uh, visit report, I will have to give members time to read it, and then I'm going to appoint a date for debate. So members are going to read it. So just a few highlights of the findings and recommendations. Right, Honorable Speaker, much obliged. I was just on the background for I'm, members I'm, to appreciate. I'm, I'm really I proceed as per your guidance, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to encourage members to read the details of the report as I proceed to 
the committee findings and recommendations. The findings are quite elaborate, still I want to inform members because in the report, the committee was able to look through the capacity of all the service providers contracted. And I want to inform the House Honorable Speaker that the service providers procured by UNBS are six in number. HQTS, Bureau Veritas, Intertech, SGS Gulf Limited, Quality Inspection Service Inc. Japan, TAF Rainland. Mr. Speaker, the committee was able to assess the capacity of all these six companies. And in our report, we went, we were able to elaborate case by case on the capacity of each company, right, Honorable Speaker. I want to proceed to general findings. However, Mr. Speaker, if you may allow me, just give details on only one company which had serious issues, Mr. Speaker, sir. That is HQTS. Right, Honorable Speaker, based on the findings of the committee, both in Dubai and India, on HQTS, in terms of their capacity to, the me to measure to the task that was assigned to them, and of course also their physical presence in the countries where uh, they are supposed to work in ensuring that they inspect the goods and services coming to Uganda. Mr. Speaker, sir, the committee observed that there was a lot lacking as far as their capacity is concerned. And there was specific recommendation uh, that the committee came out with. On return, the committee invited UNBS to respond to those issues, and therefore the committee uh, after that, came up with a specific rec rec uh, recommendation, case by case, on all these six companies that were contracted. Right on the speaker, specifically on HQTS, the committee observed that the eligibility criteria required for a successful company to be contracted was not followed in, in, in the pre-qualification process by the technical committee, evaluation committee, while giving this contract. The committee also observed that HQTS didn't have uh, office in India, both India and Dubai, even in Uganda, which are all mandatory requirements, Mr. Speaker, sir. And right when we speak specifically for HQTS, the committee submitted uh, this, fine, this uh, recommendation that UNBS should terminate the contract with HQTS. The second recommendation, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the, the committee recommended that DPP should investigate the circumstances under which HQTS was awarded this contract. Cost was awarded fraudulently, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to request members to look through the report in details as I move now to summarize with the general findings and no, honorable, general recommendations. Honorable, that's enough. On the recommendations. Th that's enough. That's enough, don't mind. Members are going to read. Okay? Members are going to read. So, uh, honorable colleagues, I'm Rachel going to. Speaker, I now. I have laid the report and copies of the documents. Yeah. I want a back to report to this August House that the report be received for onward procedures of adoption. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Th thank you, thank you, Chair, uh, for the good work. Uh, I know, colleagues, uh, the difference between other reports and field reports, the rules treat them differently when you're presenting, okay? So uh, I know Chair, it might have, uh, uh, she, she was prepared to present the full report and then I made her present just a few highlights. But Chair, well done. Well done. So let members read and then after reading I'll appoint um, in two weeks time, please crack, in two weeks time. Let us have a debate on this matter. We also defer the debate on sericulture, the report from the Committee on Science and, and, and Technology. I'm, I'm still proceeding. So, <laughs> so, uh, so also ensure that is captured. I don't want us to lose focus. The report comes, and I promise we are going to have a debate, and then we don't have it. Uh, that means that report is not adopted by the House. So the one for sericulture, 
and this one. In two weeks' time, I want us to have a debate and we conclude them. Oh, no, Macho, you had the procedure matter? Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate the way you are guiding the House. Mr. Speaker, I rose on a procedure matter that the report that has been read by the Chair, as we talk now, it is under the mandate of the Ministry of Trade to regulate the service providers that do pre-inspection export of vehicles that are coming in the country. But due to the infighting that is in the National Bureau of Standards, as we talk now, Mr. Speaker, we don't have a service provider. Vehicles are stuck in Dubai. Vehicles are stuck in India. Vehicles are stuck in Japan and even on borders. And as a result, I suspect vehicles with health hazards must, must be entering the country. Mr. Speaker, I believe Honorable Minister Ntabazi, she's she, she here. They declared through National Bureau of Standards and handpicked the company that the chair person has just talked about. And yesterday we hear the same company was given a monopoly. Moreover, we have very good companies, the two that we are working, a very good job, like a, like a EAA, and we are really oh, satisfied oh, no, don't take that the market. Route. I therefore, Mr. Yes. Speaker, yeah. pray and request that the minister who is here, who has slept on the job as per the word of today from the LOP and you, Mr. Speaker, should give a statement. Why do we have a monopoly? And why do we have vehicles piled in Dubai, in India, in Japan, when AEE and the other company was doing a good job? And why have you got a company that the chairperson has just talked about that failed? And again, yesterday was given a monopoly to... To, to work as a service but, provider. But Honor Macho, you seem to be very updated on these matters. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, no, you see, you, you see, Honor colleagues, Honor colleagues, I want us when, when we are debating, okay, we don't leave room for blackmailers to go out and blackmail us that so and so is pushing for this company, so and so. That's why for us we are very cautious. We leave the procurement is done. In case there are problems, we come in. Okay? Now, there is a statement used that the minister is sleeping on the job. That's a heavy roaded statement. So, one of the ministers proved that you're not sleeping on the job so that Macho can withdraw that statement. Thank you so much, All right, Honorable Speaker. And I want to thank the House for giving me this opportunity. My friend Macho knows that I'm one of the people who have been pursuing him because he's a, a cross-border trader and uh, <laughs> we have our own issues at the border. So he, uh, <laughs> he's not a smuggler, but he's a cross-trader. Uh, we understand. Yes, so uh, we've been uh, passionately working on trade together. He's just making a joke uh, in, in Parliament. Of course, I'm among the topmost performing ministers of this country. So, so uh, since Honorable Macho has confirmed that it's a joke, okay, jokes of that nature are not good to remain on the record of the answer. So, Honorable Macho, uh, you can be courteous to your colleague, you have a better. Uh, in Mr. Speaker, sir, being a cross border trader, my sister, Honorable Tavaz, always harasses us. And I was joking. It is a joke. I therefore want to withdraw. Thank you. But she should tell us why there is a monopoly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, beyond that, he raised the salient issues. Please respond to Tony Omacho. Thank you so much, Right uh, Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, you had guided. And uh, the reason why I kept seated, I thought maybe we would come in two weeks. But... The matters which are at the border are critical. And right, uh, Honorable Speaker, UNBS has been summoned to my office almost twice. This matter came to my attention, and uh, because they had taken a procurement as UNBS, they are the same very people to take the second procurement. It's not the Ministry of Trade directly. So we've guided them because there was a, a matter before the PPDA tribunal, which was determined that these people should go back and pre, pro, I mean, re-procure at least two companies, not one. 
the guidance was given, and uh, I'm going to be on top of it to see why the UNBS is not picking the guidance from the tribunal. And I want to tell you that this matter will be resolved. Thank you. Now, on Honorable Kamunda, Honorable Kamuntu, so it's in first, Honorable Kamuntu. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I thank the Committee of Trade and uh, Tourism for a good report. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and uh, colleagues, for the last two weeks in the media, we have seen uh, UWA, the department under tourism, uh, a lot of money have disappeared for, for gorilla tracking and chimpanzee tracking to the tune of 60 billion. And the right honorable speaker, you are aware all the tourism roads are in the bad shape. And here money is disappearing. And the Committee of Trade and Tourism, it seems they are not aware of that uh, irregularity and fraud. Even uh, the Prime Minister, she has not even mentioned about the same. And uh, to me, who comes from Rwanda, where 90% of gain is found, where we have no single road. Uh, every day we push oh, trucks carrying. What, what is the issue, Honorable? The issue is this committee should investigate the fraud that is happening under UWA. And they come with a report because it is a serious issue. But now, but colleagues, sometimes you are unfair to us. We were on the issue of <laughs> motor vehicle tracking, okay, and UNBS, and, uh, and, and now, Honorable colleague, because there are clear ways. Honorable Kamunt, you didn't come to my office to raise that matter, and I denied you. No, so this one, uh, Honorable Minister, please. There is a procedure how we handle these matters. I know I've been following up on that matter person I've been reading, and it's a very salient issue, but the way you've brought it. Because there is a way we bring business in the house, so we need. But uh, uh, since it's uh, a matter to do with uh, public funds, Honorable Minister, I saw you uh, on top of your game. Uh, would you mind updating us if it does not jeopardize investigations? Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. <coughs> and I'd thank uh, Honorable Kamoto for raising the matter. It's indeed true. And uh, unfortunately, this leaked to the press as a result of internal investigations that were already ongoing under the Ministry and UA. So, and tomorrow we'll be putting out a statement. Probably I can share that with Parliament tomorrow. You see, Parliament does not go to search for, for statements in newspapers and what. If there is information you feel should come on the record. You see, this is a national record, even a thousand years from now. It's used by researchers, it's used by all kinds of formal bodies, and it's a formal information compared to newspapers. So you want to update the House on this investigation? Well, if need be, but I can give a simple explanation here. But if need be, tomorrow I can come before the House and give a proper statement on this matter. Please do, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Amos, you wanted to say something? On, on this matter of uh, PIVOC? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, you can see the attention of the report is more to do with the the providers of the service. And as a reminder, as a backdrop of the reason why these providers were chosen is the inability or undercapacity of UNBS. And when we decided as government, or as a country, to pick on these providers, the purpose was to build capacity of UNBS. Through you, Right Honorable Speaker, I'd like to request that the committee goes further to investigate the capacity of UNBS and whether we should continue to have this capital flight to people who are not even helping us since we see other substandard products entering the country. Thank you, Right Honorable That will come in the debate. 
when we are concluding. We need it first debate. And yes, we read the report, we debate, and then you can propose an amendment and uh, I will give further assignment. But, Honorable Minister, this issue of motor vehicle tracking, it seems you're, you're having a lot of issues uh, uh, with these issues uh, which generate money on your side. Not you as an individual, Honorable Minister, meaning generally UNBS. Because I even saw the letter of your minister asking, you know, you had stopped uh, 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 the process, then UNBS goes ahead and extends for one farm and leaves out another farm. Now you ask yourself, so if they said the procurement process has a problem and these two farms are all part of the problem you have identified, why are you basing it? Choose one company, say, for you continue, and this company wait. I thought if they are all affected, they should be all affected. Either you stop all of them, or you say, no, we've extended for both of you as we, uh, as we conclude on the process. Because that is deemed to, to look like you have already concluded on this company for it, it's okay. Okay? So, Minister, you need to take further attention on this matter. And uh, on Tuesday, please, update us on Tuesday on this issue of UNBS. UNBS is having uh, many issues. There are issues, one of the minister. You see, a good example, one of our colleagues. UNBS, a company, for example, says, I'm producing this product, and UNBS says no. You can't call it this name, it's misleading. Okay? You can't use it. Then they allow foreign products of that same name to come into the country. Now, in the process, what happens? Uh, 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 you find that what happens? Customers come looking for a specific product, let's say, medicated like medicated hand wash. You allow foreigners to bring in a product called medicated hand wash. When Ugandans try to do it, you say no. That is misleading. You can't produce medicated hand wash. And then you leave the market foreigners. Some, most of these products, Ugandans are producing all of them, most of them. Okay? But UNBS is not supporting it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very big, big problem. This one, of, when I read the minister's letter, where they were allowing, where the minister, a minister even pleads with UNBS. I don't know which power they have, <laughs> by the way. They make a minister plead. You, you find the minister's political head. I fire you. Yes, if I'm a political head and your executive director of UNBS and you don't listen to me, I fire you. If the president decides to fire me, well and good, but I fire you. Otherwise, why are you a political head? Huh. A political head, political head is you're about to run at parliament for help. Huh? Over supervising your own agencies. Rob. <laughs> Can't it be? Thank you, Red Honor Speaker. I would like to appreciate the chairperson for the report. And um, I hope and pray that once the debate is concluded, uh, Parliament will supervise action taken. Yeah. Uh, why I'm raising the issue of action taken, Mr. Right Speaker, because we have handled the other issues that are pending uh, parliamentary decision, yet the actors still go on. We have not left the controversy around the digital number plate issue. The Minister of Internal Affairs says the procurement is fraudulent. The Minister of Defense says, Minister of Security says all is okay. And uh, in between, Parliament is, uh, as the arbiter and protector of public interest has not taken a decision on the matter. Right on the speaker. In the meantime, the actors outside the realm of parliament are still progressing. I probably do not return here again to do a post-mortem on the same. But at least a minister raised a red flag to say, you people 
as pretending over outright fraud. Not on the speaker. On digital number plates. It's on record. In this house, right on the speaker, on the 15th of August, 2023, the owner of Mwanga raised the matter about another entity secured and procured fraudulent called SICPA, South Africa, working on behalf of URA without a contract. The speaker ordered that the land attorney general on 17th lays before parliament that contract. Today is effectively the 4th of October. Let on the speaker. So are we doing justice to this space? Right on the speaker, I think these are the kind of uh, happenings that give actors with uh, intention to defraud the motivation to go on. If we do not undertake citizen arrest in this space, the fraud will not stop right on the speaker. And I'm kindly inviting for an indulgence over these matters that ring around the parliament, but actors outside the parliament believe parliament will talk about it and then forget. It really breaks our energy and the skilled motivation of this honorable house from doing their oversight duty, right now, Speaker. I shall pray. Thank you. Yes, uh, honorable colleagues, uh, for example, on the issue of motor vehicle, we gave the minister 30 days when I received that petition. In fact, there is a petition which came to the committee, and a petition had been given to around 10 agencies. The, t the 30 days have elapsed, okay? So uh, the Minister for Security should report back to the House on how he has handled the petition. Attorney General, on that same issue, there were issues which members raised on the legality, like money for fines, which money is already gazetted to be for road fund. Now you go, you sign with someone that he will take it away. Then you ask yourself, is a signature, a contractual signature, uh, uh, above the law? If it's not confirming with the law, uh, how is it going to be implemented? Money for finance should be going to consolidated fund, and then it goes to the road fund. Should be going to the road fund. So what was the basis of saying someone can use it to pay for digital number plates? So these are, these are issues uh, I need... Um, I, I, I need the Minister for Security next week to come and uh, give an action taken report in terms of the petition of which he received because I stopped the committee on physical infrastructure. I said until further guidance after the Minister has. Then Attorney General, we shall also need to be guided on um, the issue of classified procurement. Because also I, I will discuss with ROP, we see how best to handle them. Because if it is classified, and now it's on the floor of parliament, and every detail is being put here, is it still classified? Okay? Yes. So we also need to look into uh, uh, issues so that, uh, so, so that we handle things in the right way. Uh, in the in, in right way. The one of SICPA, you are supposed to lay. What happened that on the general? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I do remember that we committed to lay, and uh, probably we may have delayed for one reason or another. Allow me time and uh, I pledge to do it on Tuesday next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next. Laying of papers, item 3-2, report oh, of the Director General. Uh, sorry, sorry. Minister, you had wanted to say something, Minister, for trade? Oh, you had finished. I was going to finish. Okay, then finish. Yes. Um, right Honorable Speaker, the Minister is not going to deny that there are no challenges in UNBS. We would be lying because uh, the, the, the change of leadership and all that was because there were challenges. 
as we talk now, we have an acting uh, executive director who has just replaced the other one, the owner, uh, Mr. Biru. And because of those challenges, that's why a bill went out. So there are challenges in UNBS, that one we shall agree. Now, the, what we are going to do as the ministry is to cause a meeting, I think, with uh, the board, because the board is supposed to oversee the implementation of these, some of these uh, uh, actions. Now, the chairman of the board is still insisting that uh, EAA is not cred credible enough but still insists that a country can have one company to inspect. In, uh, in, in, like Tanzania is having one company, Kenya is having one company. So he gave me that example and said, Uganda can also have. But let it be in good terms, well procured. Because if the terms, if these two companies all expired at the same time, and you have not carried out another exercise of... Rec of uh, of identifying other new companies. Then the two, all the two should have extension. That was my argument. And I'm saying if that one is done, then there would be no case for us to argue here. The procurement would have taken place and then they say you are not qualifying and you are qualifying in a free and fair manner. Thank as you. simple as that. Thank you. Now, Honourable Minister, we don't want to be involved in the procurement. In how many companies you want to give, it's you to assess and for us we shall come in to do oversight. If we find you gave one company and it's not doing the job well, then we come we recommend. If we find you gave three and they are doing well, or one company is doing well, well and good. What we need is these things moving uh, very well. Le let's uh, just uh, uh, stop it at that. Most um, obliged. Thank you. Uh, uh, next. Item 3.2, report of the Auditor General on the financial statements on the National Social Security Fund for the year ended 30th June 2023. Commissioner. Right on our speaker, I beg to lay the report of the Auditor General for the National Social Security Fund Annual Report and Financial Statements for the year that ended 30th June 2023. I beg to lay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. The report is referred to COSASE for consideration and reporting back. Item 3.3, laying of papers, report of the delegation of the Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs on a start date to East African Legislative Assembly on the regional security matters. Chair. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the report of the delegation of the Sectoral Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs on a study tour to South African Legislative Assembly on regional security matters from the 18th to 23rd September 2022 in Arusha, Tanzania. The recommendations, the delegation then led by the chair, Honorable Nyashikongo, and the EBO team, the report has been uploaded. I beg to lay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, colleagues, uh uh, please read the report. I'll also appoint the date. Crack, you will guide me uh, when we shall be ready for debate after looking at uh, the business that we do have. Uh, because rules, uh, uh, rules at 4-3 uh, tells me that I shall appoint a date, so I will do that. I want to know, Minister for Education, is your statement ready? Is it uploaded? I want to confirm. Is it uploaded? Crack, if it's uh, uploaded, I will amend the order paper to allow a statement on Teachers' Day. Statement on the World Teachers' Day. Honorable no. Minister. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving us the opportunity to present this statement to Parliament on World Teachers' Day. 
right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, the World Teachers Day is celebrated worldwide on 5th October each year to recognize the pivotal role teachers play in shaping the lives of our young generation. It is an International Observancy Day that was created by the UNESCO to show appreciation for the vital contribution that teachers make to education and development of nations. It was created in 1994 to commemorate the signing of the 1966 UNESCO stroke ILO recommendation concerning the status of teachers, which is a stand standard setting instrument that addresses the status and situations of teachers around the world. This day is dedicated to raising public awareness on teachers' issues to enable recognition of their special value in our lives. Teachers constitute one of the largest national human resources dedicated to nurturing our young generation and we look to them to guide our children in their quest for education. Teachers are frontline participants in education reform and are therefore critical to successful quality schooling worldwide. They are therefore, they deserve to be recognized and valued. We commend all Ugandan teachers for the devotion to provide hope in our children for the future of this nation. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, our government is committed to provide quality education to all, and teachers are critical ingredients in this process. Sustainable Development Goal 4 requires us as a nation to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote life life learning opportunities for all targets. We rely on our teachers to move this agenda forward as we ensure that every child in this country has the opportunity to exercise his or her right to access affordable education of equitable quality. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education and Sports in collaboration with the teachers unions are organizing the day celebration nationally on the 5th of October, which is Friday, 2023. On, on Thursday, 5th October, I beg your pardon, right honorable speaker and colleagues. It's Thursday, 5th October, 2023. The theme for this year's Teacher's Day is the teacher we need for the education we want a global imperative to reverse teachers' shortage. Celebrations will be held at two levels as follows, right honorable speaker and colleagues. Number one, the national celebrations will be held at Kololo Independence Grounds, and this will be presided over by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, as the chief guest. Number two, District celebrations will be held in every district and municipality in this country, as has always been in the case each year on the 5th October. It should be noted that all teachers, both in public and private, will be celebrating. The general public, right honorable speaker and colleagues, is therefore informed that teachers countrywide will be celebrating their day on Thursday, 5th October, 2023. And for that matter, they will not be expected at the schools. A circular has already been sent to all chief administrative officers and all schools. As I conclude, right honorable speaker, the purpose of this brief is to inform you and honorable colleagues about the day and the public, and to invite you 
to join sit down to honorable speaker. I beg to lay on table a circular for the World Teachers Day that was sent to the Chief Administrative Office and all district leadership on 28th September 2023 to allow our teachers to celebrate this day. I beg to lay and I beg to move and I thank you, right now, speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, I'll allow a debate of uh, 30 minutes on this, each one of us, uh, two minutes. Um, wow. There are known teachers. Uh, now everyone is claiming to be a teacher. Uh, I wish you could be honest like when I was paying what I said and the mothers. <laughs> yes, so let me start. Uh, Honorable Nyach Kongoro, I pick, uh, uh, this is Kamwenge. Yes. Uh, colleagues, I want to do affirmative action first. And, uh, and uh, allow me to first do it. So, Kamwenge, uh, I will do Mamawi. Okay. Uh, I, I will do Bungoko. Yes, Bungoko, yes. Uh, then, uh, I will do is there a honorable colleague? The, yes. Uh, the, the, that Masaka. That's Masaka. And, and then Otuke. Now, if you've spoken today, please, you know, your chances are very limited. I'm going to allow you colleagues. Two minutes each, I'm going to pick. If you've spoken today, whether it was a greeting or order, <laughs> hey, hey, honorable, I'm going to allow you. Please, thank two you. minutes each. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity and for the minister to bring this statement which we've been yearning for. We want to congratulate the teachers for the good job that they are doing and we are all products of teachers. Right Honorable Speaker, when we were insisting that some of us are going to participate in these celebrations, we had a cause because teachers have their issues, and as members who represent teachers in parliament, we cannot miss out really participating in their activities. However, it is coinciding with parliamentary seating. I don't know how we are going to resolve that. We don't want to be caught up by saying that we are dodging parliament, yet we want to go and participate with teachers. Right, Honorable Speaker, when we were doing PDM rounds, we identified that there are some teachers who had applied to, to be part of the beneficiaries. But however, they are stopped because they are earning from government. But when you compare the peanut money that they are getting in terms of salary, especially the arts teachers, it is really terrible. And they cannot do any other business. What they, we, we were told was that they were given money in their circle. And most of the teachers have never accessed that money. What I wanted to know from the minister is, was that money released to their circles and are those circles existing such that those teachers can go to their circles to get money rather than being tossed between PDM and other uh, uh, facilities that government has put in place? Thank you. Kamange. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. And I would like to thank the minister uh, for her paper that really treasures teachers as she was reading. Uh, tomorrow, being uh, the, uh, the Teacher's Day, we are all happy for them because we are because they are. The parliament is because teachers are there. The nation is because teachers are there. So... Uh, I also take this opportunity to congratulate uh, them so much and how I wish we, this day is actually treasured more than it is because if we are told that we are invited to go and participate in the celebrations, the national celebrations at Kololo tomorrow and, the, and His Excellency is the chief guest and we have not yet tested for COVID, 
Some of us really have passionate passion. We are so passionate about, about teachers. If we, we were invited on time, we would have te taken COVID test and we would be there physically because we are what we are because of teachers. I thank you. Thank you. Mama, we... Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to thank the Minister for being so proactive and uh, bringing this report in time to the House here. Right Honourable Speaker, we are all teachers in one way or the other, but teaching being a profession, I want to thank all the teachers and congratulate them upon the work they are doing in this country. Right Honourable Speaker, as we commemorate the day, we must not forget about the welfare of the teachers. In most times, when I talk about this, I know it's going to raise a lot of issues, and this is issue which we have been talking about in this house here. But it still remains a challenge. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, my prayer is that much as there are challenges, but let the issue of welfare for teachers be taken very seriously. And in time, we need to look at this one after the other. Secondly, right now, Speaker, as we celebrate the day, we are being heard that tomorrow we have a session, and it is true there are other international days which are highly respected in this country. And I'm wondering why we are not respecting the National Teachers Day, uh, that we, we need to join our teachers so that they're also happy, and we are here because of them, right, Honourable Speaker. Therefore, I request we need to have a solution for this. If not today, but with time, let the parliament also accord teachers the, the respect they deserve. I thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Now, uh,